The good news this morning that is in the Psalms is that when you do become overexposed, and when you become exhausted, and when you become stressed, and when you are mature enough in your walk to admit that you can be blessed and stressed at the same time, there is a place where you can go. I will bless the Lord at all times. God's praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Alfred Street, that's your part. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt the name of God together. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord and let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. For great is our God, and our God is greatly to be praised from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same. The name of our God is indeed worthy to be praised. And if you know that the name of Jesus is above all names, and that it is indeed worthy of our worship this morning, join me one more time. Hallelujah. We bless your name in the sanctuary, Lord God. We lift you high in this place, O oh God. We extol and adore you and we rejoice in you, God. And while you are rejoicing, help me now to thank God for your pastor. None other than the Reverend Dr. Howard John Wesley. God bless you, my brother. And thank you for this opportunity to be here. Help me also praise God for this wonderful singing aggregation of women. Hallelujah, and under the direction of Dr. Currington, God bless you this morning. Indeed, I am thankful to be here with you all this morning to celebrate this Women's Day, and we are now making haste to the Word of God. If you would join me in the reading of the Word of God, I invite you to stand as you are able all over the house for the reading of the Word of God, a very familiar passage coming to us this morning from the book of Psalms, chapter 91. Blessed be the name of Jesus. And the very first verse says this. You who dwell, you who live in the shelter of the Most High and who abide under the shadow of the Almighty will say of the Lord, you are my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. And since it's Women's Day, let me remix the word of God like this. She who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. She who dwells, she who dwells. As you're having your seat in the presence of the Lord, please pray with me this morning on the subject of the significance of shadows. Please join me in a word of prayer. God, we bless you, we honor you, and we thank you. For this is the day that you have made, and we are rejoicing and we are glad in it. We are thankful that you brought us into this house to gather in your name and to worship you. And we ask now as we have come to your word, O oh God, that you would speak now for your children are listening. We need to hear a word from the true and the living God. So speak now, for your children are listening. And while you are speaking, God, in the name of Jesus, we bind every distraction. We bind every distracting thought, every distracting emotion, and every distracting device that we might be fully planted and fully present and fully receptive to every word that shall come from your mouth today. And I am your child, I am your daughter, I am but a vessel to your vision. And it is my mission to make you famous, Jesus. 
And so take every gift, faculty, and resource that you have given me and use it now for your glory that your people will be edified and somebody in this place will be reminded that God is still God. And because we know that you will do it and we know that it's already done, the people of God all over this house said amen, amen. 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 One more time for the spirit of God, amen. amen. The significance of shadows. Brothers and sisters, I come to you this morning with a little bit of a counter-cultural idea. In this age of overnight fame and obsession with follower counts and likes and comments on social media posts, in this age of preoccupation with giving the people what they want, and a proliferation of platforms to do just that. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, Kick, and probably some new one as of yesterday. We all have an audience, whether real or imagined. These audiences beckon us into the light, the spotlight, the forefront at all times. And as we are here this morning to talk about what it means to be women and, and men of God in this age of preoccupation with platforms, have you ever noticed that people don't really post when they're having a bad day, when their hair isn't just right, when their skin isn't popping, when the lighting isn't perfect? Have you ever noticed people don't make a lot of posts when they're not exactly feeling so great about themselves or about their lives? Because in the light, we have to shine. Or at least give the appearance that we are shining. We have to be on. We've got to glow and style and profile. And unfortunately, we have to contend with the pressure that this applies on some of us those of us who are simply trying to live authentic lives. There's a pressure to be perfect, a pressure to be photo ready, a pressure to be successful, a, a pressure to be likable and presentable. And as a result, we are always stimulated, stimulated from the lights on the cell phone, keeping our brains wired at night, stimulated by the comparison of our looks to their looks and our lives to their lives. So much stimulation, not enough relaxation. And in the end, we are burnt out, burning our wicks from both ends until there's nothing left to burn, no light left to shine. Moreover, we are a people. If you are not obsessed with social media, it's likely that you are a person who's addicted to being busy all the time. You think that your sense of worth and importance comes from how many appointments are on your calendar and how many places you have to be and how many people you have to meet with and how many conversations you have to have. And if you're a millennial, you take a lot of satisfaction from being on the grind. We like to say, I'm grinding. I, I got to get on my grind because it's countercultural to just sit down and be somewhere. <laughs> Busyness makes us feel like we're doing something. Busyness and this American addiction to productivity and the creation of more things, things to do, things to go, places to go. This is how we operate, and once again, we end up burnt out. Burnt out, no good to ourselves, no good to our communities, to our families, the people who love us, but the text this morning comes to confront us and to disrupt this culture and to confront our tendencies with a nourishing word. She who dwells, dwells in the secret place, 
of the Most High shall rest under the shadow, under the shadow of the Almighty. There's another way to live, people of God. There's another way to be. There's another way to exist and to thrive in this saturated 21st century. Yes, we are called to let our lights so shine before men and women, but we are also called to go sit down somewhere. <laughs> sit down somewhere. We are also called to be quiet sometimes, especially when you don't have anything useful to say. We are also called to stop, to pause, to say la. We're called to hide out, to sit down in the shade, to rest under the shadow, the shadow of the Most High God. Shadows are defined as dark areas that are created when an opaque object blocks the light of a light source. You know shadows. You know shadows. As a child, you might have created shadows on the wall at night to help you put yourself to sleep as a sister on this women's day if we're honest we know the 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 creepy feeling of seeing our shadow on the pavement and another shadow following our shadow in the light of the of the of the night we know what it feels like to rest under the shadow of the shade on a hot day and she who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall rest under the shadow, under the dark areas of the Almighty. What an interesting idea in the text this morning. What use does God have for shadows? What use does God have for dark areas? What is this talk of darkness and dark areas in the Psalter this morning. Aren't we called to be the salt and the light? What about let there be light on the first day of all time? What about the separation of the light from the darkness? What about the demonization of the dark and the association of darkness with blackness and blackness with evil and deviance and nonsensical and the criminal what about the association of black men with uh, uh, deviant sexuality and black women with jezebels and tragic mulattoes and mammies and angry black women what use does god have for with darkness what use does God have with shadows? Isn't there devils lurking in the shadows? Isn't that where secrets hide out in shadows? What is the divine utility of a shadow? This psalm suggests that contrary to the pulse of the times, God actually can use a shadow to bless your life. God can use a shadow to bless your life. And just like the shade of the shadow in the heat of the day, shadows keep you cool in the heat of life because overexposure is a real thing. Those of us who are uh, uh, somewhat challenged with the melanin content get sunburned from overexposure and there is such a thing as too much light, too much exposure, too much attention, too many eyes stalking and hawking your every move. And unfortunately, people of God, we accommodate it. We generate it. We're seduced by it because we like eyes on us, if we're 
really honest. We like to be watched. We like the shine of large platforms and the ego stroke of a large following and people knowing who we are. And before we know it, we are overexposed. And so every now and then, we need to back into the shadows. The good news this morning that is in the Psalms is that when you do become overexposed, and when you become exhausted, and when you become stressed, and when you are mature enough in your walk to admit that you can be blessed and stressed at the same time, there is a place where you can go. There's a place where you can go and be restored. There's a place where you can go and be resuscitated. There is a place where the people of God can go to receive the healing of the Spirit of God, to receive the help of the Spirit of God. There is a place, oh my God, where we can go to be restored in the presence of God, where there is the fullness of joy and life evermore, pleasures forevermore at God's right hand. Is there anybody in the sanctuary this morning that could use a little restoration? Is there anybody in God's house that can use a touch from God's hand this morning? Is there anybody here that can use a little bit of rest and relaxation? Well, the word of God tells us this morning there's a place where you can go. There's a place that you can run to. There's a place where you can hide in, and it is the secret place of the Most High God, the shadow of the Almighty. It calls us in, it beckons us in, it draws us into the shadow of the Most High God to hide, to be restored, and to be healed. And it suggests to us this morning that there are a few things that we can find if we would hide ourselves under the shadow, in the shadow of the Almighty. And the first thing it suggests is that there is solitude there. There's peace and there's quiet. Respite, a, a, a getaway from the, the hustle and the bustle, day in and day out. We are inundated. We are bombarded with so many voices and so many noises. And I don't know about you, but these voices wear me out. In addition to the voices of family and friends who require time to stay in relationship and stay connected, there's the voices of CNN and MSNBC and TV One and Fox, if that's your thing. <laughs> and other outlets that seem to continually report on the sheer idiocy and tyranny of this current administration. And then there's the voices of the current administration who seem to think that we are stupid and don't know that they are the face of the lingering presence and legacy of white supremacy in this nation. And then it's the voices of the white supremacists who call thinking, intelligent, and grown black men obscenities just for exercising their constitutional rights and taking knees to demand respect in their work. It's the voices of women, such as the Secretary of Education, who give alleged perpetrators of sexual assault the right to cross-examine their victims. Women who uphold patriarchal cultures and, 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 but under the shadow. We can get away from the voices. The voices that talk about wars and rumors of wars and natural disasters and mass shootings. The voices that seem to tell us that there's not enough for all of us in the kingdom of God. The voices that seem to want to tell us that we are not as beautiful as others when they create racist marketing ads that suggest that you are clean when you are white and dirty when you are black. If you don't know, if you haven't heard, go Google the latest Dove ad that was released yesterday. Uh, but under the shadow, 
there is serenity, peace and quiet. There is the agency to cut off those voices that run rampant in your ear and wreak havoc on your spirit. But there is a catch, people of God. There's a, there is a caveat that to get the serenity that you have to have the solitude which suggests that everyone is not welcome under your shadow. Everyone cannot come under the shadow of the Almighty with you. Not everyone will understand when it's time for you to cut off yourself from, from them and run under the shadow for safety. Because if you're really honest, some of the voices that you keep closest to you are some of the noisiest voices of all. Some of your friends, some of your family, some of the people that you willingly follow on the internet are some of the most negative, most critical, most judgmental, least spiritually minded people in your life. Some of us don't even have to turn on a TV or open up a newspaper for bad news because the people in our lives have enough bad news and no news and negative news, and underdeveloped views, and antiquated opinions, and carnal mentalities, and we give them airtime. We allow them to infect our spirit each and every day. And I don't know your reasons why, but I want to let you know that not everybody can come under the shadow with you. For the shadow of the Almighty is sacred. The shadow is holy. It is not for the one who does not know your God. It is not for the one who does not walk with your God or talk to your God. It is not for the one who doesn't understand kingdom language and kingdom values and kingdom ethics and doesn't understand that as a person of God, every now and then I must steal away to the shadow. Steal away to Jesus and get the word of God that is for my life. The shadow is for the one who dwells with God. It is for the one who lives with God. And everyone can't be under your shadow, especially if they can't keep your secrets. Especially if they can't see you breaking, especially if they cannot hold your challenges and your triumphs in tandem and, and who have never been in a valley with you. For the shadows are only for those who know how to dwell with you in the shadow. So if they go running at the sound of your moan and get uncomfortable at the, at the appearance of your tears or if they Stop showing up when you're no longer at the top of your game. If they've only ever abandoned you when you find yourself in a valley, then they cannot dwell with you in your shadow. For under the shadow, you have to minimize your distractions and minimize your dual commitments. For God that works in the God that works in our shadows is looking for us to focus on what God has to say in the shadows. And this is why I can relate to my brother Drake when he says that he don't need no new friends. <laughs> because I don't know about you, but I only have a few friends who've been around in my life long enough to see me in my valleys, to dwell with me in my shadows, and to also come with me to my mountaintops. And those who have loved me the same through each and every situation and season, you don't need an entourage, family. You don't need a clique of people. All you need is two or three who are gathered in the name of Jesus to pray you through a shadow season. Even if they're not under the shadow with you, all you need, my sisters, are a few good women to have your back, a few good women to stand with you, a few good women to kneel with you, a few good women to sister you while you're under the shadow. Is there any sister in the sanctuary this morning? who knows that you have gotten where you've gotten because the goodness of God and also because of some sisters who have been there for 
give you some sisters who've been a rock in a weary land, some sister who was available in the midnight hour. I'm thankful today for the sisters that God has given me, for the sisterhood that holds my mind from time to time. Because a sister is the one who will tell you, you are not, you ain't where you need to be, girl. You need to go sit down somewhere, girl. You need to get your mind right, girl. Girl, you need to check your teeth because you got so many, girl. Girl, you know that ain't the man for you. There is a thing that we must say about sisterhood. Hallelujah. For she who dwells under the shadow. And sisterhood is a, is a thing that we nurture in the shadows. Because sometimes the real sisters aren't only attracted to your light. They must be able to stand with you in the shadows. We can't be afraid to be alone or to have a small, intimate circle when it's time to go under the shadow. And if you peruse the book of Job, he lets us know that it's good to be selective of who you allow to speak into your life when you're under the shadow. After calamity and calamity and calamity came upon Job, his perspective of his life was not healed in the company of his friends. In fact, his friends only made matters worse. His perspective was fixed, however, when he got alone with his God when he stopped entertaining so many voices and stopped trying to figure things out on his own and finally turned his eyes upon God. He began to understand that everything's not meant to be understood right now. But as long as Job was giving attention to those competing voices, God's voice couldn't break through enough to bring the revelation. Sometimes we have to get under the shadow in order to get the lesson that will nourish us from the inside out. There's serenity, there's solitude under the shadow, but there's also safety yeah. under the shadow. Text says, surely God will save you from the fowler's snare yeah. and the deadly pestilence. God will cover you with God's feathers and under God's wings, you'll find refuge. In 1943, psychologist Abraham Maslow produced Maslow's hierarchy of human needs. The theory lists five primary areas of basic needs that, if unmet, make our lives very difficult. Second to physiological needs, such as water, air, food, and sleep, are safety needs. A person needs to feel secure from harm, secure from crisis, secure from danger, safe from violence and harm. Anyone who has ever experienced any of these things knows that it is necessary to feel safe, to have some peace of mind. Yeah. And yet so many of us take safety for granted, even while hurricanes are taking out lives and families and entire communities and cities all over the world. Even while black and brown American citizens are fearful of being deported to homelands that they never knew. Yeah. Even while our Muslim family continue to experience hate crimes and profiling, and while many of us walk around with the sneaky suspicion that most of the white people we know are responsible for this situation that we're in. People that we've known for years, people who've looked into our faces and smiled and tried to convince us that they like us, including the 53% of white women who voted for 45. At some point, they wanted us to think that we were all cool and all equal. I don't know about you, but ever since November 8th, I find myself constantly looking over my shoulder. Who, who's in the room? Where, where am I? 
because we have a need to feel safe. Not even just in the world, but in our homes, some of us aren't safe. In our churches, some of us aren't safe. On the internet, some of us aren't safe. Safety is that feeling of not having to second guess your surroundings. Not having to wonder who's going to fall from the sky and what's going to come around the corner. Not having to wonder if a traffic stop will, ele will escalate into getting out of your car and becoming the next hashtag. It's not having to guess which ones in your circle are plotting for your demise and which ones really want to see you succeed. It's not having to politic for your place at the table because we are all deserving of a place at God's table but when you're in the shadow, there's safety. Verse 7 tells us that a thousand might fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come nigh you. For God will give God's angels charge over you to keep you in all of your ways. For in the shadow, weapons might form, but they shall not prosper because you're safe. Tongues might rise against you, but they shall do you no harm because you're safe under the shadow. Nights, nights might be long and days might be contentious, but under the shadow, you've got the safety and you don't have to be afraid. Isaiah 41 says, do not be afraid for I'm with you. Do not be dismayed for I'm the Lord your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand, which means that no matter what's going on around you, under the shadow of the most high God, you've got a God that will fight for you. You've got a God that will go before you. You've got a God that will flank you to your right and flank you to your left. Under the shadow, you've got a God that will follow and hold up your rear end. You are safe under the shadow of the most high God. You might hear about your haters, but they cannot touch you under the shadow. You might continue to see the weary rays of this world, but under the shadow, you've got the safety of the most high God. You might hear about wars. You might hear rumors of wars, but under the shadow, you don't have to lift a finger. You don't have to think about how you're going to retaliate. You will not have to think about what you're going to do to get back and what you're going to do to get even and what you're going to do to set the record straight because under the shadow you got a God that will speak for you a God that will fight for you a God that will go to the battle lines for you but stand still and see the salvation of the Lord and rest under the shadow of the most Hi, God. Ha, this battle is not yours, says God. It is mine to fight because you're under my shadow. Hallelujah. When you dwell under the shadow, you don't have to fight because you are safe. Safe in, in his arms. Safe under the shadow. Safe under his wings when you press your way into the secret place you need only stand still Woo! and let the Lord fight for you and let the Lord do what God is going to do because I don't know about you but I can testify that God wins every time hallelujah that God wins every time even when it seems like God's backs are against the ropes, God always comes swinging. God always comes fighting. And all we've got to do is stand and say, go ahead, God. Go ahead, God. Go ahead. Under the shadow, we get to see how awesome our God really is. When we get up under the shadow of the most high God. We're safe. Thank you, God. Woo. Safe under the shadow. Woo. 
solitude, serenity, safety, finally. There's satisfaction under the shadow. Satisfaction. The very last verse in the psalm says, with long life will I satisfy you. Come on, that's the word of God right there, right? With long life will I satisfy you and I will show you my salvation. You know when you're satisfied and when you're not. You know when you're satisfied and when you're, when you're not. You know the feeling of when you are living that abundant life and that life more abundantly that Jesus came to, to give us. And it's, it's really, when you look at the word and it says, with long life, I'll satisfy you. What it draws my attention to this morning is the things that come to drain the life out of us. And I know that when I said that, your mind probably went <laughs> to that person or that place or whatever. You know there's a place where you have had to go somewhere in your life where before you can even get out of the car, you gotta sit there for a minute. <laughs> Ooh, Lord. Lord, help me, Jesus. Ooh, keep my mind, Jesus. And I don't know, maybe it was your house Maybe it was your job, but before you could get the courage and the stamina to walk into the door, you had to sit for a minute and intercede for yourself and ask God, help me. When I get into that place, you know what's waiting for me in there. You know who's in there. You know the challenges that I have faced in there. So give me the strength that I need. These are the kinds of things we do when we're not satisfied. The kinds of things that we go through, the rituals that we have to go through when we are making negotiations and compromises to our joy and to our peace and to our well-being. When you know that this thing drains the life out of me, you got to psych yourself out to participate. And don't you know that the anxiety takes time away from you? It weighs on your body. It weighs on your mind. I've had a couple of seasons where I was losing hair and losing sleep because I was not satisfied. Satisfaction, well, I, you know, we're often told, particularly as black women, that there's so much more value in suffering than there is in satisfaction. Oh my God. But the word tells us this morning, it's with long life. Long life with good days. Long life with peace of mind. Long life with healthy relationships. Long life with soul fulfilling work. Long life with health in our bodies. It's with long life that God will satisfy us. God don't keep us safe from the tricks and the plans and the traps of the enemy for us to be miserable. And to stay miserable but when you get under the shadow and you start to get a taste of what it feels like to be in peace. Hallelujah. When you get under the shadow and you get a, 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 a foretaste of what it feels like to, to, to just be satisfied, and be filled and, and, and to be held onto, you start to decide, I don't want to just get under the shadow. I, I want to live under the shadow. I, I want to stay under the shadow. I want to I wanna make my home under the shadow. And so you begin to have to make some decisions 
about what will stay and what will go, because what we know is everything can come if you're going to live in the shadow. So, so, so what is it this morning, people of God? What is it this morning that cannot come under the shadow with you? What is it that must be directed out, removed, so you can live under the shadow? Because she who dwells in the secret place of the Most High God shall rest under the shadow of the Almighty. It is not God's intention. And I know that this might be somebody's first time hearing something like this. But let me just clue you in. This is what we call womanist liberation theology. It is not God's intention for you to be surviving. Does that make sense? That the God of exceedingly and abundantly above all that we could ask, think, or imagine would sequester us to survival? We've got to understand that under the shadow, we meet the God of thriving. We meet the God of more than enough. We meet the God of extra, the God of overflow, the God of more peace than you can stand, more love than you can hold, the God of more health than you can contain, the God of more goodness and fecundity and livelihood. But you must get under the shadow. This is the significance of shadows safety, security, serenity, and satisfaction under the shadow of the Most High God. This is the Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God.